lost 53 in the district. So membership and retaining members continues to be an issue for us to work on. Uh, we did not go with a membership chair per area. We kind of let the um, AGs take care of that for us uh, with membership chairs for each club. We have chartered, we are signing and have submitted a charter for a new generation's Rotaract Club in the Metro Greenville area. Uh, we will achieve that goal uh, within the next few weeks, actually. Uh, we chartered the Rotary Club of Lake Wiley last June 30th. Uh, very active and growing club, I might add. We are working on increasing our goals uh, for, to the Rotary Foundation. Uh, we hope to see an increase of 10%. We had a wonderful district polio plus event. Uh, the golf ball dropped back in September. We netted $4,700 for that. That was a district-wide event. If you missed it, it was lots and lots of fun. And I will tell you that Kathy Ronald, our polio chair, just did an outstanding job. We have another event coming up if you missed that one. I don't want you to miss February the 18th. We are going to be with the Greenville Road Warriors, a, a, an ice hockey team. We are going to be stopping polio cold at that event. Judy Prince, raise your hand please, has tickets for sale, $16.50 for each ticket. It's on a Friday night, so it'll be a good night if you could make it to Greenville and you love ice hockey. $16.50 and your club will get $2 credit towards your Polio Plus for each ticket that's sold. We are also selling commemorative hockey pucks uh, for that event. Even if you can't attend, you, if you can buy one of these hockey pucks, that will help us in our goal, uh, our Polio Plus goal for the district. So I hope, see Judy, or uh, you can contact your AG, or you can go online for, to sign up for tickets. So we hope to see you all there. We're going to have special seating, and it's going to be a lot of fun for us. Uh, so far, we raised 88000 last year for our Polio Plus goal. We have raised 88000 this year so far. So, so far, we have raised 177000 So we're over our goal. We, we don't want to stop there. For sure, we want to keep going. We would like to see this this uh, challenge completed by international uh, convention in May. So let's let's keep working on this polio plus. Adding 75 benefactors. Benefactors is one of the easiest, most painless things you can do for your foundation. It's a thousand dollars upon your death. You're not going to miss it. It does not require uh, a great deal of uh, legal preparation. You fill out a card. And our foundation chair, Rich Wall, happened to have brought some cards up on this front table. We would love to see every one of you sign up to be a benefactor upon your death. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to do for your Rotary Foundation. Um, five Paul Harris Society members. Currently, we are at 24 we would like to add more. Uh, 24 in a district of almost 3,000 people is a very small percentage. Now, Paul Harris Society members pledge $1,000 a year to the Rotary Foundation. You can do it through uh, electronic transfer once a quarter at $250. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that you can do for your foundation, which will help us to to be able to do the programs that we want to get done uh, worldwide and locally as well. We would like to add some five bequest society, and that's a little step up from benefactor. That's 10,000 upon your death. It can be in money, it can be in insurance policy, it can be in stock, it can be in property. There's no restriction on how you pledge that 10,000 upon your death. This is another wonderful way to, to help your uh, district, your RI Foundation as well. Hold three World Affairs seminars. Our plan was to hold three, one in October, which we did hold. If you missed it, you missed an outstanding event with Deepa Willingham. Uh, 
But we have another extremely exciting one coming up on March the 14th. We were going to do a water uh, foundation event in March, but all the people out still has decided to be out of the country the whole month of March, so that won't work for us. So we're going to, we, we've had an opportunity to have some of our Haitian friends in. Father LaFontaine will be here on March the 14th. It's going to be an awesome event. Uh, Lynn Kenny, Claire Cool, and Rita Yarborough, and David Brown are in charge of this event. Uh, it's going to be outstanding. But again, the October event was wonderful. Joe Babb and his team, Liz Patterson, Ed Eirich, I um, know I'm going to leave out someone, uh, did a wonderful, wonderful job with that event. We actually cleared a profit enough to send $2,000 recently sent to the Pace Universal, which is deepest school in India for girls, the one that she talked about in her, in her presentation that night. So we felt very good about that. Uh, all presidents-elect complete at your club goals. You didn't make it for me, but I know you're going to make it for Gary. So, GSE team, some of you probably don't even realize that we have already sent our group study exchange team out this year. They went in October to Japan. It was a team of six. Usually we send five, but we had five of the most outstanding young women Already we had chosen a team leader who, who was female. Uh, we ended up sending six to Japan in October. The interesting thing is we are going to be receiving on April the 23rd their team, all female. We have come a long way in Rotary for sure, particularly when you look at the culture and how it's changing. AGs work with presidents to appoint club literacy coordinators. To my knowledge, we have one in each club. Each club to adopt a literacy program in cooperation with district literacy coordinator. Most of our clubs have a literacy project, uh, and we feel very good about that as well. Some of you who may not have a local literacy project do have an international one. Uh, you may have contributed to our book project in Haiti. Uh, March is Literacy Month on the Rotary calendar. We would love for you to have some event in your club during March. Uh, one of our major goals this year was to start a library in Conj, Haiti. Uh, we've, had, we've run into some issues with timing. Uh, because of the earthquake, the facility, the library became a medical supply depot basically for Conj. And they're just now getting around to getting all the medical supplies cleared out. So first we were going to go in November, and then we were going this, uh, this month. Uh, we've also had an issue. Uh, Sarah Monsbach's husband is undergoing uh, treatment in Houston uh, for the next 90 days. And uh, so she's not able to go until June. So we've, we've postponed it, but we're looking for folks who might like to join us in Haiti to do this wonderful project. We've gotten uh, nearly $6,000 from your clubs and donations. It's going to allow us to buy a lot of books. We're going to fund this library. We're also going to send out tubs to each of the 18 satellite libraries and we hope to set up an electronic system in the Conj library which is really going to facilitate uh, being able to, to check out books and check them back in. So we're in the process of ordering books right now. We, we thank you so much for your generosity. Without you, we would not be purchasing any books. And I might add that the Easley Club applied for a, a District Simplified Grant, which they received, which is also going to help us to buy those materials as well for that project. World Community Service, water projects. We have them going on in Honduras. Uh, we have sanitation and food. We're working all around the, the globe, actually, on these. We have uh, water projects. We have uh, the uh, homegrown relief in Haiti, where we're teaching sustainable agriculture with the help of the uh, Charles and Ghislaine Warren. They will also be at the March 14th uh, events. Many of you have given money for this project. Uh, we appreciate that so much. 
Many of you have given money for the water project. Uh, we appreciate your generosity with that. We can make a difference in the world. We will make a difference in the world. Where do we stand with our president-elect uh, attending uh, pets? I hope that you're all, there. Gary says good. So we feel very, very positive about that. Uh, it's very, you know, the thing about pets is it changes from one year to the next. So even if you were a club president two years ago, things have changed dramatically. Uh, so we need you all there so we can be on the same page. Uh, we changed our AG's meeting from monthly to quarterly uh, at the request of the AG's. So uh, we've completed, thank you, Terry Weaver, we have completed our training of club secretaries. Uh, we did it uh, with webinars this time. Uh, I hope you participated, those who, who did. Uh, Terry worked very hard, very long hours to get that training out. We hope you're all using DACDB. It's the only way to go only way to go. Presidents meet all reporting deadlines. We think so. We think so. We haven't gotten any reports otherwise, so hopefully that's the case. Regional membership seminars. Miles has done a great job with these seminars and, and we've done those regionally with the help of the AGs. Uh, Mid-year assembly, I hope you're all here. <laughs> if you're not, uh, we, we are continuing with our district administrator, Pam Weaver. I don't know what we would do without her. Uh, she is the, the cog in this wheel, makes things go. She's the only one that has the continuity from one DG to the next, knows what to anticipate. Uh, we are in the, I, I said that we had posted the budgets. I have to retract that a little bit. We do have the district budgets for every month, the expense reports. You can go to Forms and Publications on our district website and you can see how all of our money, what we've received and how it is being spent in this district. Uh, transparency seems to be the buzzword these days, at least in politics, and we wanted to be as transparent. We are having a little problem getting our uh, budgets and our uh, expenses up online for, the, for our DDF uh, uh, funds. We're working on that. Uh, we hope to have those up and running also very soon. Uh, monthly, all of that is online, so you can always check on us. Add one Rotaract and one Interact Club. We've done much better than that this year. We're so excited. Uh, we added two Rotaract Clubs. We've added a Clemson Rotaract Club. We are also, and, and you'll hear about this in a moment from our Rotaract person, we're also adding our first new generation's Rotaract Club uh, in the Greenville metro area. We actually have some of those represent. Who's here from that club? John Cato and who's our other? Oh, okay, great. Haven't even been chartered yet and we already have some participation. We're very excited about this opportunity. Uh, we are also hosting the State Interact uh, Conference in Lawrence in March. Uh, and we have a lot of folks that are working very hard on that and it's going to be you know, our, our fifth avenue of service is now new generations, and so you want to make sure when you do your club goals, president-elect, that you include that because that's where we, we need to be. Upcoming events, March 23rd, March 5th, NID trip to uh, India. I'm still looking for folks. I have three folks that, who are going with me. It's not too late to sign up. I checked. We still They still have a few spots left if you want to go to... India uh, and participate in National Immunization Day. Wonderful, wonderful opportunity. March 14th, the Voice of Haiti at Lander on the Square here in Greenwood. March 17th is Pets through the 19th. 27th Stop Hunger Now event. I've sent out this information to the Greenville area. Christchurch Greenville is going to be, if you remember in Carroll, for that year we packed food packets with a high protein nutrients to send out to other countries. We're go they are going to be doing that as a, a, a community event. They have asked us to participate. So anyone who would like to come and package the food on March the 27th, let us know. We'll be happy to, to get you involved in that. District Conference, May 13th through 15th. I hope you got a feel for the beach from the beach music. 
a few moments ago. It's time to put on your shagging shoes. Uh, train trip, we're going to be talking about that more. We have, we've had a few uh, empty spots because of folks who've had to change their plans. So if you want to go on the train trip with us, the interesting thing is we've had four people from North Carolina to sign up. So I don't want to give all of our, our spots away to the North Carolinians. Uh, we'd love to have you on the train trip. We have lots of fun activities planned. Gent Literacy Project, if you'd like to go to Haiti and help us set up a library, we would love to have you. Gent uh, District Governor Changeover Dinner is the 25th. I forgot to add that. It will be in the Greenwood area over in Hodges at uh, the Multicultural Center. Uh, so we have lots of wonderful events, lots of opportunities for you to get to know the, your fellow Rotarians and to chip away at your stone. How am I doing? Three minutes? Good. Okay, great. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, and this is in your district newsletter for January. This is essentially hot off the press. You have as a club until April the 1st to apply to be a charter for what I think are four exciting initiatives from Rotary International. One of them is something that I have been proposing for the last two or three years, and that's corporate memberships. Your club can apply as a pilot to have corporate membership. That means that a company joins Rotary, they designate four employees of that country. It should be someone senior, and then it can be three junior employees. They may all come to the Rotary Club meeting. They may only one come at a time. It's up. That's perfectly all right. They should participate in the club project that you do, and they have to pay their dues. But they're not bound by coming each week. So your senior person doesn't have to come all of the time. We hear that all the time. Well, I'd love to be a Rotarian, but I can't make all these meetings. You know, I, I'm the manager. I know we have one in here at Walmart. And there's no way that you're going to make all of them. But if you could send some of your, your junior uh, folks, you would have that opportunity. Another uh, one of the innovative pro uh, pilots is going to be Flexible Rotary Club, in which you can change one element of your club. You might offer a family membership. You might offer online. You may rotate between meetings and online uh, or in-person meetings. So that's another one that you might want to look into applying as a pilot. And another one uh, is, associate, uh, is uh, associate members. Folks who, well, they're kind of on the fence. Am I really going to be able to do this? I need to just kind of try out a club and see if I'm going to be able to, to participate and if I can afford it. You can designate associate members. Uh, you, as a club, decide how long you're going to allow them to be associates. Uh, so that's an opportunity for you. And then another one will be the satellite clubs, where one club might meet five days a week. One day it has its regular meeting, but then there's a group that meets on the next day uh, in person at, at uh, a restaurant or something. And then somebody else meets, on, another group from that club meets online. If you're interested in being a pilot district, a pilot club, please get that information off of the January newsletter. And uh, we hope to see some of these applications come in for April 1st. I think it's going to be an exciting time.